Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be starting my new sketchbook and I'm very excited. I am also super excited because I have teamed up with Artex to give away two sets of their 126 colored pencils. And when Artex first reached out to me to, you know, try these out, I was like, you know, I've heard really good things about them, but I don't really need more colored pencils right now. And they came back to me and said, hey, how about you try them out? And if you like them, then we can give away two sets to your audience. And I was like, okay. I'm, I'm totally in for that. And as you will see in this video, I love these. I love these colored pencils so much. Can we just talk about how adorable this packaging is? The top comes off like that, but I really like how you can set this up on your desk and see all of the colors that you have. So yes, let's sketch a little bit and stay tuned to hear how you can win one of these guys. Okay, so these pencils have a thick wax-based core and the ends are capped, which should make them more resistant to breaking. There are color codes and color names on each pencil, which is very helpful. And as I said, I really just loved the packaging and design of these pencils. I think it was really well thought out and allows for a better drawing experience than if all of the colors were in a tin. It is a lot of pencils, but because of the packaging design, they take up very minimal room on your desk. I decided to start by swatching all of the colors on the first page. I wanted to see the color selection and get an idea of how they felt going down on the paper. It also weirdly made starting this sketchbook less intimidating. I won't show all of the swatching because there is a lot, but I will tell you that I was really happy and surprised with how nicely they felt. They were all very soft and pigmented, and they really reminded me of Prismacolor Premier pencils, which are also wax-based. I really like Prismacolor Premiers, but I find that they break a lot. And I'm hoping because of the thicker core and the capped end that these guys don't break as easy. As I said, the color selection is fantastic. They have a great variety of reds and blues, greens and earth tones. I really loved all of the grays. I think those are super handy to have, especially for portraits. There are also a couple metallic colors and a few neon colors. I was really excited about that opera pink. Here is a little clip of me trying to figure out what stickers to put on the cover. This was really fun, but also so hard to decide. I will put the sticker artists on the screen. So to start off this sketching session, I decided to draw a little cat portrait because it's something I love to draw and I think that's always a great way to start a sketchbook. I'm just starting the sketch with a mechanical pencil and then I soften it a little bit with an eraser. So as I selected colors and used them in this portrait, I kept them out on my desk rather than putting them back in the box. And this is because I like to use a somewhat limited color palette. And I also like to use some of the same colors in the other sketches on the page because it gives the whole page a more cohesive look that I really enjoy. So when I'm sketching from a reference, like this cat, I want the sketch to be my interpretation, not a carbon copy. I want my artistic interests to show through, and that's going to include the colors I choose, the shapes I exaggerate, the details I choose to include, and the ones that I decide to leave out. 
So I get a lot of comments where people want to know exactly what colors I'm using. So I made sure to write them down this time so that I can tell you guys. I don't always do this, not because I'm gatekeeping or anything, but just because I think the choice of color doesn't really matter as much as we think it does. I'm more focused on the values and the shapes. I could have done this drawing with any combination of colors, and I think sometimes that can be a fun exercise. That's also a super exciting part about drawing or painting. You can choose whatever colors you want, they don't need to be in the reference, and the colors you choose are going to show your unique artistic interpretation, which I think is super cool. So I'm going to list all of the colors I used on this spread. So there are a few colors here that aren't in this cat portrait, but they are in the other sketches on this page. So the colors I used in this spread are pale green, lemon yellow, lime peel, light aqua, pastel blue, indigo blue, violet, Mayan violet, lavender, wisteria, dark salmon, peach puff, pale vermilion, scarlet red, yellowed orange, burnt ochre, and burnt umber. I really liked the wisteria and the lavender. I also loved the Mayan violet and the dark salmon. I think those might be my favorites that I've used. I only ended up using 17 of the 126 colors, so I still have so many colors to experiment with. I do think that using too many colors in one drawing can make the drawing feel a little boring uh, and sometimes a little bit muddy. It kind of sounds counterintuitive, you'd think that more colors would be more exciting, but I think this is one of those cases where less is more and a more limited palette is more interesting to look at. So next on the page, I decided to do a metallic object because I think that can be a super fun thing to describe with color. So the reference I followed was a copper urn or vessel of some sort. And to start, I tried to use only the colors that I had already used in the cat, so only the pencils that I had on the desk. But I did eventually add a couple new colors namely the greens. I find green is usually necessary to describe copper, brass, or gold, at least for me. I always see some greens in those surfaces. This is an object where switching up the direction of your pencil can be really helpful for describing the form. So you'll see I do that a lot and I really just have fun layering the colors and pulling out some interesting shapes that I see in the reference. Now these Artex pencils, they say that they are artist quality. Uh, but that being said, I don't know how archival they are. That isn't a huge deal for me because I will mainly be using them in my sketchbooks and I think they might become my go-to sketchbook pencils because I really enjoyed using them.
So the last sketch on this page, I wanted to do a human portrait and I found this reference of a man with a cat on his shoulders. So I thought it would be the perfect way to tie this page together. The image is black and white, so I had the fun challenge of choosing whatever colors I wanted. I really want to try doing this more, uh, perhaps even taking my reference photos and making them black and white so that I don't have the colors in the photo to follow and I think you guys should try that challenge as well. I think it will make us more adventurous with colors and, and maybe choose some wacky colors that we wouldn't normally go for. I really didn't expect to go so purple with this one when I started, but that is where it ended up, very purple. this reference was really striking because the planes of the face are so obvious. There are a few ways you can show different planes. One way is by changing your values and hues for each plane shift. Another way is to change the direction of your strokes. I kind of did a combination of both for this one. A fun way to add some interest to your sketches is to give yourself a colored backdrop and I did that on this page and I really played with having the backdrop sort of fade away and that way I was only emphasizing certain areas of the sketch and I think it was a really interesting effect so I might do that a little bit more in the future and I invite you to try adding it to your own sketches. I think it's really fun. You can either choose a color that is already in the sketch because that will right away feel cohesive, but you can also choose a complementary color to the main color in the drawing. And I did this for the last sketch on the page, which was mostly purple. So I chose a yellowy green backdrop, which is roughly the color that would be on the opposite side of the color wheel. And that is a way to really make your drawing pop. Okay, so let's talk about the giveaway. So to make things a bit easier, Artex and I decided to host this giveaway on Instagram. And that's just because it makes it a whole lot easier to see all of the entries and to actually contact the winners. So to enter, just head over to my Instagram. I will have it linked at the top of the description box. And the pinned post there is the giveaway post. And basically you just have to make sure you're following me and Artex and leave a comment on that post tagging a friend that you think would also be interested in entering the giveaway. And that's basically it. Uh, if you don't have an Instagram account, maybe you have a friend or family member that does that you could use to enter, but of course you can still chat with me in the comments of this video. I will do my very best to respond. Thank you Artex, of course, for sponsoring today's video and for gifting me and two of you guys some colored pencils. So I'd love to know if you've tried out these pencils yourself or if you haven't and you're going to enter the giveaway over on Instagram. 
I also want to say a huge thank you to our channel members. You guys are so amazing and I truly appreciate the support. Thank you everyone for watching. If you liked the video, you can leave it a like. And if you want to see when I post next, you can subscribe. I will see you all very soon with another video. Bye-bye.